Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 1st, 2023 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We'll call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum present tonight. Uh, we did not have anyone uh, register for public comments. So our first item of business is to approve the minutes of the October 11th, 2023 and October 18th, 2023 planning commission meetings. I'll had a chance to uh, read those ahead of time. And if we had any additions or corrections, please state so. And otherwise we're ready for a motion. So moved for both the sets of minutes. Second. Motion and second on the minutes. Ms. Jacob. Ms. Sablewater. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Silas. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Chair Jones. Aye. Okay, we have two items of old business tonight. Our first item is a zoning application for approximately 18 acres located along East Northfield Boulevard and North Tennessee Boulevard to be rezoned from CF to PRD. This is Northfield Acres PRD. It's 14.7 acres. And then PCD, which is Northfield Acres PCD, 3.28 acres. Arian Smith Contractors, Inc. is the applicant. Good evening, Ms. Smith. Good evening, Commission. Uh, you may recall this particular project site shown on the screen ahead is uh, at North Tennessee and East Northfield Boulevard. Current zoning is uh, CF on the entirety of the piece. Uh, this property you actually looked at back in, I think it was April. Uh, you may recall the conversations. We did have a neighborhood meeting in advance of that meeting, uh, but most of the meetings centered around the uh, commercial type use in the particular project. Uh, as Mr. Taylor will be going over uh, later on this evening, is there have been some modifications to the layout of the uh, project site that have affected some of the uh, ingress and egress for the project site, one between the commercial and the residential pieces, as well as into the commercial site itself. Uh, we did have our uh, Streets Department take a look at those uh, potential changes to the circulation system, uh, which you can see here on the top of the screen. Uh, previously, this road actually came in and tied into the commercial uh, component. That portion was removed from this updated site. And then this ingress point and this ingress point did not exist previously. Uh, and so they're both right in, right out onlys. And the one at this point does not allow a left out onto North Tennessee. And then lastly, just the location of these buildings here and their orientation was modified. So those are kind of the bigger pictures, although um, all the changes are included in your program book. Uh, you may recall this particular development had about 5.75 dwelling units to the acre for the residential component. And there were multiple questions that were on vehicle access. That's why I think that was the biggest change here. And you had also asked the applicant to reevaluate the potential gas station. Uh, the exceptions requested in this program book uh, for single family detached and the single family attached uh, are still the same as they were before with one modification. The single family detached homes have decreased the front setback to 22 feet in front of the garages, but it's still able to maintain the parking that it had previously. And both the townhome and the single family residential continue to be in compliance with our parking standards and exceed those standards. Uh, and the townhome units also provide for guest parking, uh, which they've added some in this location. And there were already priors in these other locations in close proximity to those townhome buildings, which are depicted with the orange building. Uh, in looking at uh, the biggest things that you did see on your um, staff report previously were there were some distances that were shown um, from the commercial type uses, uh, the standards that are used are a little bit different than what we use if it was a CF zoned piece of property. Uh, 
um, in that we generally measure uh, one type of thing, I believe it's the gas canopies from property lines rather from building structures. And then when we look at drive-through uses, we generally measure those from the property line to the actual uh, drive-through lane, speaker box as such. Uh, but staff did look at it a little bit deeper and it did say if BZA had a project like that, if there were mitigations incorporated into the program, uh, they could consider those. So in staff's report, if that was something that you wanted to consider, we think the commercial component would one, need to specifically identify where those speaker boxes were. Uh, it's difficult to tell by this location, but the furthest away from the uses that still could accommodate it would actually be at this location and this location as far as the speaker boxes and then if the gas canopy was a type of use that was allowed uh, that it should consider some what I would say lights out options between 10 and 6 due to the close proximity of existing residential that is zone multifamily across the street uh, so based on uh, generally supportive of the project because the commercial not necessarily the specific uses, but commercial in general, and having that available to the adjacent residential neighborhood, we believe, you know, provides some needs for those neighbors. The density is in compliance with our compatible uh, district that we're referring to. Uh, there are less traffic impacts overall because a CF on this entire piece would actually generate more traffic, we anticipate, than a residential typical use. And then lastly, the PRD does offer a lot of um, opportunities that we don't see today for the townhome type development, as well as the single family. And uh, with that last statement is, um, those would be up to the planning commission to decide whether the request that they are making uh, is mitigating any potential effects adequately or needs further revision and we're looking at a recommendation of some sort to the council um, if that is your pleasure this evening and with that I will turn it over to Mr. Matt Taylor who will go over more specifics of the project including he has a slide in here that's a side-by-side -side comparison so you can better see those changes very good thank you Holly <coughs> Matt Taylor of SEC um, I've got my clients uh, with me as well. I won't run through the whole presentation. Y'all heard that um, at the original public hearing, but I uh, primarily did want to focus on this slide uh, to walk through these side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, at the public hearing, uh, we did uh, focus on what I felt like were two things primarily. One was this access point onto uh, North Tennessee. Um, several people were concerned about sight lines and sight visibility. And so at that meeting, we agreed to make that, uh, go back and look at that. And so we made that, uh, I'll call it half a pork chop. So you cannot turn left um, out of that entrance. And so I think those were the concerns. There's not a problem as you come around the curve to turn into the site. There's already a middle turn lane there. Uh, there's no sight distance uh, as people come from this direction so we want to leave that as as open as possible in talking with staff uh, but we did make that half a pork chop so you cannot make that left out it's a right out only there we also there was a lot of conversation about how the commercial and the residential interacted and so we removed uh, this direct connection right there so that people could not go directly from uh, whatever use happens on the corner um, into the residential and so uh, we, we made that separation there and then that introduced a, an additional access point there and there back out onto the main streets just to help those um, the circulation for the commercial areas um, so again those those were the main changes to the program based on uh, the discussions that I heard at Planning Commission at that public hearing um, some of the neighbors did want the gas station to come out. Um, it's an allowed use there today, so we would like for it to stay. Um, we have, we're 
fine with the hours of operation. I think we had originally proposed 6 to 11 inside the book anyway. And so I think um, Ms. Holly said 6 to 10. So we're okay with that ad additional restriction. And as far as um, saying where the speaker boxes would go, I don't know exactly where they could go, but I think that we could make the commitment they would go on the east side of that building there so it's, that is not going to be pointed directly at any houses it's going to be pointed at the commercial uh, users um, or back out toward uh, northfield boulevard so um, somewhere along that side i just don't know exactly where it would fall because we don't know who those users are today and these are some of the details holly went over these in general uh, you know, just under 80 uh, total residential units on 18 acres, two out parcels. Again, we don't know who these users are. These are purely conceptual uh, in nature, um, and we, we feel like these are realistic users. Um, we have provided over 30% open space, screened all of our parking, and as always, we'll take care of our lights on site. <clears throat> Nothing about the building architecture has changed. We've still tried to keep very high quality, very interesting architecture, good quality materials here. So nothing about these has changed since the public hearing. And I believe everybody was satisfied, uh, liked the way that this architecture looked. Same thing on the attached. Again, these are all rear load, um, face out toward the street. That's part of the reason we've asked for that shallower front setback. Um, I think that everybody was very complimentary of these actually uh, at the public hearing. And then the building design, again, we don't know who, who these are or what these buildings will look like exactly, but we've set those standards inside of here so that uh, whenever we do have those end users, we can hold those people accountable, uh, make sure they're meeting an exact criteria. Uh, for us in the future. We did provide some examples inside the book as well as the PowerPoint. Those have not changed uh, since the public hearing. And then we have maintained throughout uh, extensive buffering and landscaping. So again, we have um, a type D with an eight foot uh, solid fence uh, and double row of trees between the commercial and the residential and then adjoining um, Forest Oaks on the kind of the south and west side. Uh, we've uh, agreed to a six foot solid fence there. The neighbors at our neighborhood meeting were concerned with lights from cars. And so we've agreed to do that. And then we'll have um, along, all along North Tennessee, uh, the other projects along that street have constructed landscaping and uh, three rail fencing, so we want to continue that same aesthetic to make it uh, appear to be a cohesive development, even though there are three or four different projects through there. The amenities, we have not changed uh, the amenities since our public hearing. These are still consistent. Um, got pickleball, gazebos, so more gathering and social areas rather than large structured really think these are really geared toward our target market. And then we went through the allowed uses. A full list of those are inside of the pattern book um, itself. And then we already talked about the access points there. Can, can we talk about that one little, uh, the one you've got dashed in right there that, that does. Right here? Yes, sir, that connects out. Yes, I guess that's only coming from the residential into the commercial just to basically have a connection out to yeah. East Northfield? Yeah, it, so in talking with staff, we wanted to maintain that connection so that, you know, if you lived here mm -hmm. and you did want to go get a biscuit or gas or whatever, you didn't have to come all the way out and drive over there. And so I wanted to keep that uh, connectivity in words. That's why we took this one out and left this and left this one we felt like this one here that you're talking about uh -huh. was a little more hidden away it would uh, minimize the cut through traffic from the commercial into the residential uh, but did still want some sort of interconnectivity just to keep pe try to keep as many people off northfield especially if you live in the neighborhood because that's one way right there correct? you can go both ways right there we talked about gating it um, 
there wasn't a desire to, to have that gated. Uh, they wanted to leave that uh, full access, but you can go both ways right there. But coming out of the neighborhood, they have to take a right and go around the building that way. Yes, ma'am. What ma you're saying is somebody could be coming from the other side of the building and still make it around the building and get back into the residential side. Yes, ma'am. Like that? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. Thank you. So there was uh, Ms. Smith, and I may be um, taking this too literally, uh, mentioned lights out 10 to 6. I, I, I heard you say that at 10 p.m., that's when the, if there was a gas station, that's when the gas station would close. But are we literally saying that, like, the, the lights that are in the parking lot are going to turn off at 10 o'clock? I, I think it's meant as an hours of operation so you may still have an employee wrapping up in there yeah. so you may want the parking lot lights to stay on a little right. longer just for some safety mm -hmm. but i think like hours of operation i, I think okay. that's what we're yeah and so like okay. the gas wouldn't be operating um i think those are the same hours that we used at um, northfield and sulfur springs on that pro I, okay. I think that's consistent with that project okay i'm sorry i interrupted you mr taylor no, I um, think I was done. The rest of that was uh, exceptions, which we already went over, so uh, I didn't want to be long. Just wanted to hit the high points of what we changed. Okay. I'll be happy to answer any questions, though. Any other questions for Mr. Taylor or Ms. Smith before we... Oh, we don't have to open the public hearing. No, don't have to do that. Questions? Comments? There are no, I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Jaco. Ms. Saberwater. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Salas. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Chair Jones. Aye. <coughs> Thank you all. Three. <coughs> all right. One more item of old business. This is a zoning application for approximately 1.2 acres located along North Manny Avenue and Lee Street to be rezoned from OGR and CCO to PRD and CCO. Manny Estates, PRD, BNA Homes is the applicant, Ms. Smith. Thank you again, Chair Jones. Uh, as you can see on the screen ahead, uh, these are the properties that are involved in the uh, Manny Estates project and maybe just for clarification because I don't think we discussed it previously is this particular portion of the property is uh, currently part of the commercial piece of uh, house that's going to remain there but it is going to take out the back garage structure and incorporate that into the single family uh, detached portion of the project site. Uh, in looking at it, you may recall this uh, we discussed at our last meeting on the 8th, 11th, and we had our public hearing back July 12th with a neighborhood meeting in between those. Uh, and I believe uh, to highlight where the commission was last time, there were a couple of questions between mostly on the townhome side of things about parking, how much bedrooms, those specifics so staff went ahead and included in your staff report on the first page just a comparison of the lee street townhomes uh, up the street versus this particular project for some clarity and then the applicant included in their program book um, some exhibits that i think more clearly show uh, similar to some of our other prd books where the parking is, where the trash cans are, where the HVAC units are. Uh, and you'll see like this one up on the screen, uh, this one shows one of the single family units and you can see the three car garage with the three parking spaces um, on it. And then as if you go to the townhome side of things, you can see the car parking, which is two surface cars per space uh, unit and one our garage and then the location of the HVAC units um, which I'm sure Mr. Roundtree is in the audience will be um, uh, going through those particulars on it 
uh, and looking at the project overall, the single family detached residential uh, is consistent clearly with our future land use map. Uh, we believe that the 19 and a half foot front setback, that also excludes the porch, so meaning the porch will be 19 and a half feet back as well as the structures um, and the neighborhood compatible overlay, uh, we believe are consistent along Manny. On the Lee Street side, we are generally supportive because it's consistent with our future land use map. And when we look at the policies of the North Highland study, the mixed residential neighborhood category, um, it does appear that um, it is consistent with that, but we know that uh, commission may still have some outstanding questions as they relate to both density and coverage, uh, which we'll look to the applicant to give a presentation based on the program book that you have. And as uh, Mr. Burns is available as well this evening and was not previously, and I believe that was the main reason that you deferred it last time out. Call it Mr. Rancher. Thank you, Holly. Clyde Roundry, Huddleston Steel Engineering. I'm here representing Mr. Brian Burns on Manny Estates. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity again to be in front of you. And I just want to thank Holly for all our hard work. Holly's really worked very diligently to try to bring the pattern book up to a, a place and help us get to that place where we feel like we're communicating uh, all the expectations on the site. Uh, since the last time we met, it really it's more of clarification, as Holly mentioned. If that graphic that's on the screen can be put on, uh, that's the primary area. Uh, the townhome section where we, we delineated where the actual AC units are going to be, where the parking capacity is going to be uh, outlined in, in, in the red, and also where the poly carts will be stored within the garages. Um, we talked it, we discussed as a team about the possibility of trying to uh, reduce the size of the units or go down to two bedroom and really looking at the profile and how well Lee Street, um, the townhomes down the street have performed. Um, you know, we still think that the, um, the seven units is, is operable for uh, that location. Uh, Mr. Burns has uh, been very successful so far in his, his downtown redevelopment projects. We feel like this one is consistent with the quality and the nature of what's already been accomplished downtown. And, um, and right now, I, I drove through the neighborhood probably for about 30 minutes tonight before the meeting just to kind of get my sense because I know it's the big question that's in front of us is density. You know, is it too dense for the area? Are we just crowding it in? And we feel like with a 15-foot front setback, with the rear garages and the rear um, the rear storage for you know no cars on the street along Lee Street, you know the green space along the driveway, um, formal open space along the front of the buildings, characteristics of craftsman style that's consistent with the North Highland study, we're still in the position that we feel like it's a project that's fitting for the neighborhood. Um, it's just coming down to um, the density that's we're asking for. It's, it's been a little bit of an issue because we feel like we're within the density requirements that are allowed. We feel like we've um, made alterations to this plan multiple times with reducing the units. We've always been, we've been whittling away at this site for quite some time. Uh, Mr. Burns is still convinced that this is an infill project that, you know, we think we're enhancing something in the neighborhood. Uh, I went by tonight and the garage is torn down. He's had to deal with someone living in one of those garages, so the garage is now torn down. Uh, one of the houses that's going to be demoed has is, is now been kind of cleared out. And he's having to kind of, as an owner, he's having to kind of work within that constraint of those houses are really not in great shape and some are being actually abused. So with that in mind, I'm here just to answer any questions. Um, we didn't alter the plan. We, all, we, we enhanced the book for more clarification. Uh, we still, we feel like we're parked adequately. We feel like we're uh, within the constraints of the ordinance. But with that in mind, uh, we're here to ask for any feedback and any recommendations you have for us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rountree. What questions do we have for Mr. Rountree or Mr. Burns regarding the... Uh... So the other uh, development that's near here that, Brian, that you did, um, I I'm assuming we are saying that it's the same number of parking spaces per unit, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. I think we have a, I think Holly said we have one or two extra. Okay. That one. How many? Four extra compared to that one. All right. So, it, and it's the same, uh, same, same interiors as that one, and we changed the exterior. So, what, 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 and what are they, exactly? are they three bedroom also? They're all three bedroom too, sir. So, have you had 
any issues with respects to people parking on the street at all that you know of? No, I'm on that street all the time. I don't see parking there. And it's hard to tell because you've got the houses across the street where right. people are parking. But there's there's no problem with parking over right. there, sir. During the day, I've driven by a couple times. I haven't noticed it during the day. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Yes, sir. about the uh, the houses on Manny can you just for example um, like the it looks like two of them are uh, well three of them are 30 feet wide one of them's 24 feet wide um, is that comparable the ones I drive by all the time are those two on maple some of the first ones that you did um, like just so I can picture it what what's the like a width on those the ones on maple Elm are 24 and 25 foot wide Th the blue one you two? see on the left is 25 and the white one is 24. Okay. i could be off a foot or so but i think that's pretty close so it would be similar to it for example these two are it, you just like doubled this basically it's like taking that two lots beside each other i think i give all these uh, individual driveways the, no, I'm sorry. I got shared. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking of a yeah. different project. I got There's another one coming up. There's the middle, too, and so. spread out. Uh, yeah, and I've got another one on Maple Street. I'm doing right across from that one. It's already zoned, so it's not coming in front of the plank, I don't think. So same concept I'm going to do there. Uh, it hasn't given me no trouble. It gives you gives you more room for the yards, and, and, and it's a good look, I believe. The house, the designs of the houses are, are houses I found that were Sears and Roebuck houses in the 20s and 30s. And that's why I went with these designs. I thought it would fit in with Maple a little bit better. Or excuse me, uh, Manny. I think uh, on the meeting that, that you were not here, I think most of our uh, concerns were regarding density. We were concerned about the HVAC units, the um, was the room for for everything else that had to go on so um, I, I, I realize nothing changed but you have shown us where those uh, you have room for those items I take it those are realistic sizes for the HVAC units I don't know anything about that and that the uh, garbage cans do sit inside that garage and that's a reasonable size car you've got shown in there and still room for the you know I all. can't answer the reasonable size car but uh the uh the HVACs will sit on the side and we will, there'll be no HVACs uh where you'll see them from the street uh, it'll be just like the the project uh just one block over from it we'll have them all on the sides and on the rear units they'll be on the back What other concerns do we have from the rest of the Planning Commission? Questions? If there are none, I, I'm going to make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments. Uh, I don't, uh, I think with this layout and with prior projects not having a, an issue with parking, I think this is going to be an improvement to the uh, overall neighborhood and I'm gonna make a motion that we approve second Miss Jaco we have a motion and a second Miss Ablewater aye Vice Chair Halliburton aye Mr. Harris aye Mr. Prince aye Mr. Silas aye Mr. Wright aye Chair Jones aye hmm. Next, we will move on to our public hearings and recommendations to the City Council. 
First item is a mandatory referral and right-of-way abandonment to consider the abandonment of a right-of-way on property at 1935 Northwest Broad Street, Huddleston Steel Engineering, Inc. On behalf of 84 Lumber Company is the applicant. Ms. Kerr, good evening. Thank you, Chair Jones, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, tonight's public, first public hearing is for a mandatory referral. Uh, subject right away consists of an area located on 84 Lumber LLC properties west of Northwest Broad Street. The right away in question is located on parcel at 1935 Northwest Broad Street. It was recorded in 1949 on the Thomas Henry White Farm subdivision plat. The area surrounding the right of way is zoned heavy industrial. 84 Lumber has plans to expand its facilities to the north of the subject right of way. Because this right of way appears to be, be in excess and no longer needed for its intended purposes, 84 Lumber LLC has requested that it be abandoned. The right of way abandonment request appears to be minimal because it currently runs beneath one of the outdoor storage buildings and if abandoned, the subject right away will be quit claim to the uh, property owner and the plat will be updated before it is recorded to show this right away has as being abandoned. <clears throat> staff conducted a right away abandonment study that's included in your staff, uh, your agenda. And the engineering department requires that the request to abandon the right away be subject to submission and recording of a subdivision plat that will provide a public access easement for the benefit of the city and the users of the Greenway Trailhead that is located on this property. This easement would also need to coincide with the driveway that leads to the trail, trailway head uh, parking area. Also a public parking easement should be recorded for the benefit of the city and the users of the Greenway Trailhead and should coincide with the existing parking spaces for the trailhead. The right-of-way abandonment and final plat recording should be done simultaneously. Staff recommends that any approval of the right-of-way abandonment request be made subject to the following conditions. The applicant will be required to submit the necessary documents to the legal department, required to draft the quick claim deed. The quick claim deed will be subject to final review by the city legal department. The applicant will be responsible for recording the quick claim deed, including the payment and any recording fees. The abandonment right away shall be incorporated into the existing parcels via subdivision plat recorded at the Register of Deeds office. Public access and parking easements shall be recorded to accommodate the existing Greenway trail access and parking. Planning Commission will need to conduct a public hearing after which it will need to discuss this matter before formulating a recommendation to City Council and I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Kerr before we open the public hearing? Okay. And we will open the public hearing, see if there is anybody tonight that would like to come forward and speak on this right of way abandonment. not, we'll close the public hearing. If there's no questions, we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All staff comments. Second. <clears throat> Ms. Jacob. Thank you. Ms. Abelwater. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Silas. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Chair Jones. Aye. Motion passes. All right, our next item is a zoning application for approximately 0.35 acres located along Van Cleve Lane to be rezoned from RS-15 to light industrial. Norman Brown is the applicant. Ms. Green, good evening. Good evening, thank you. Our next public hearing this evening is for you to consider an application the planning department received to rezone property in Murfreesboro. This property is shown on the map that's on the screen before you in the blue color. It is currently zoned RS-15 in that single family residential district. And the property is a total of 2.74 acres. However, the application is only to rezone a smaller portion of that 2.74 acres, so 0.4 acre portion of property from RS-15 to light industrial district. You can see that's why the blue shape doesn't follow the property lines there. 
The adjacent property owner, Mr. Brown, owns the Roscoe Brown business, also owns this property, and would like to expand his current business in some form or fashion, and that is the impetus for this zoning application. To the north, um, the word area is actually covering up the zoning of the property just to the north. It's zoned CM, which is Commercial Medical District, and was rezoned CM by the Planning Commission City Council several years ago to allow for the expansion of the Trust Point or Polaris project. CM was the commercial zone that allowed the use but um, restricted it to really a medical use. The properties to the east are zoned LI, Light Industrial District. However, those properties to the east are located within the Gateway Design Overlay District, which not only re adds additional restrictions on aesthetics but the uses of the property. And the properties to the west and south are RS15, a single family residential district, the same zoning as this property, which allows single family detached uses by right on lots that are 15,000 square feet or greater. The light industrial district has been requested for this property. Now, go to another map that you might find helpful. Um, shows the ortho photography and lets you see the existing uses in the area. Um, the application is not to include this property within the Gateway Design Overlay District because the applicant would like to use it in ways that would not be permitted in the GDO. And so after consulting with the Development Services Director, the applicant uh, submitted an application to the Planning Department to zoning to LI. There will be a uh, requirement for a landscape buffer between a light industrial and an RS-15 zoning, and I believe that they are anticipating this requirement that's in our zoning ordinance. The um, future land use map does recommend suburban residential character for the property, which is um, consistent with the existing uh, residential development you see here. The residential development was done in the county, and so these are lots that are 15 or 20,000 square feet or greater in size, and um, they were annexed by the city sometime around 2005, and so the suburban residential character is consistent with that type pattern. However, the a future land use map that the City Council and Planning Commission recently adopted did also include a transition policy that said that if properties were not consistent with it, which this request is not consistent with the future land use map, that it may be, um, it, it is within the decision making body's ability to recommend something that's inconsistent if it meets the transition policy. So it could be an expansion of existing use or it um, specifically says that each proposed transition or change should be evaluated based on site-specific surrounding context and current goals of the city leadership. As I mentioned, the applicant did meet with the city leadership um, before coming to you for this application. You should conduct a public hearing prior to um, making a recommendation to city council. The Mr. Roundtree is here and he's representing the applicant for this project. If you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Roundtree. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Green? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret Ann Clyde Roundtree, Levelson Steel Engineering, uh, representing Mr. Norman Brown with Roscoe Brown. Uh, this is expansive, as Margaret Ann mentioned, to the existing operation. Uh, has a need for employee parking. Is really what the all the all you know the ultimate anticipation is what we're using it for. On their future, maybe be some more development, but that's going to require a different level of zoning. We feel like this is a, a request that's basically expanded a long-term operation within Murfreesboro. It's just going to help him operate even more smoothly with his growth with his employees. There's going to be a substantial amount of vegetation that stays between this uh, request and Van Cleve, so we don't feel like it's going to be any you know, unique change to the neighborhood. There's no connection from this new extension onto Van Cleve. This is really just a pure expansion of his existing kind of operational site. If you have any questions, I'm available. Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown's here as well. Okay. Any questions before we open the public hearing? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. We will open the public hearing and ask if we have anybody that would like to speak regarding this zoning application tonight. If so, you'll come to the uh, podium and state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes to state your comments. Uh, please make all comments to the Planning Commission. Uh, anybody would like to speak, please come forward. We 
Good evening. Uh, my name's Bill Russell. I uh, resident at uh, 1411 Van Cleve. Um, my understanding from your presentation is that the buffer that's there now will remain with no access from the, the L1 property to Van Cleve. Um, this is a high point of the property and I live in the low point down at the other end of the street and I have um, been talking with um, Michelle Emerson concerning all the runoff down through that property and that has to be addressed. Okay, thank you Mr. Russell. Anybody else? No? Then we'll close the public hearing. And uh, is Michelle here tonight? I don't see her. Mr. Uh, do, you, do you want to uh, address that or what, Ms. Green? Do you want to try address the runoff that he's talking about down to his property? Sure. Um, I think maybe to clarify, the area is currently wooded and the applicant has indicated a desire to develop it, so it will change, but the landscape buffer should shift. Um, so it will change. I don't want the expectation to be that it won't. Um, but when those proposed modifications are made, the applicant will be required to hire a civil engineer to prepare a plan that demonstrates compliance with the city's adopted stormwater management policy. We do not allow new developments to put additional water on properties that it doesn't already go there at a higher volume, so more water or at a quicker rate or faster, so they can't put the additional water faster onto the property. I think that um, our public infrastructure department and assistant city manager are aware of opportunities that exist in this area for existing stormwater opportunities. Um, it is something that has been noted through the years. The city does have construction plans for Wilkinson Pike, which will address some of those um, issues at this point. And it's my understanding that Wilkinson Pike acts a little bit like a levee or a dam, pushing water back um, because there are undersized pipes. And with the Wilkinson Pike is a very historic road that was named Van Cleve Lane. I, I believe it um, is one of the oldest roads in, in Rutherford County. Through the years with the paving, it, the, it's been built up and built up and built up. So when Wilkinson Pike is rebuilt, um, then those concerns will also be addressed. I don't believe it's in the five-year capital improvements plan, so I don't think it's something that's imminent or will be happening in the next five years, which is my barometer for um, improvements, but the city is aware of the drainage opportunities here, particularly with the developments that are on the um, other side of the subdivision. So those that are um, maybe Clary Park in the area. So the new development will prepare a plan and submit it that demonstrates it doesn't put more water at a higher volume on the adjacent properties, although it will not cure the existing opportunities that exist. Um, we do have some plans, but it's a matter of managing those expectations. The property is zoned light industrial, and so with that zoning, there's no restriction on access to Van Cleve Lane, um, and the zoning would not prohibit access to Van Cleve Lane. The applicant likely doesn't want to use Van Cleve Lane as a point of ingress or egress because they have a driveway onto Thompson Lane, and Thompson Lane, of course, is a arterial street and it has um, more lanes and it's better access. So I don't believe that they intend to use Van Cleve Lane, but the zoning does not restrict access to that because the property currently does have access to that road and I think would probably continue to have those entitlements. But Ms. Emerson, I'm glad that uh, the, uh, the um, Mr. Russell spoke with her because she is um, the person to speak to in City Hall when you do have concerns about existing development and I believe that is are the concerns. Thank you, Ms. Green. Any questions or comments otherwise regarding this application? Okay. If not, we're ready for a motion. Make a motion we approve, subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion and a second, Ms. Jacob. Ms. Ava Water? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. 
Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Silas? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Chair Jones? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you all. All right. Next, we have a zoning application for approximately 0.15 acres located along East Castle Street to be rezoned from RD and CCO to PRD and CCO. It's for the East Castle Manor PRD. VA Homes LLC is the applicant. Ms. Smith. Good evening. Hello again. Glad to have a new business item for you. Yeah. Uh, this one we set uh, at your last meeting for a public hearing this evening. Uh, you may recall this particular property is uh, within our city core overlay. And as you can see on the map that's on the screen, currently uh, this is in our future land use map as one of our mixed form housing areas. This is one of the things that we're seeing <clears throat> more in our CCO areas that are not covered by our North Highlands plan. Uh, when they adopted the new future land use uh, plan, this mixed form housing works very similar um, to uh, the ones in the North Highland area that allow for single family two, three, up to four in one unit. This particular one, the underlying zoning is RD for a duplex or two family. Uh, and in this case, this PRD is coming before you for seven exceptions uh, that they're requesting uh, within this particular area. And when you look at the um, neighborhood, the building here on the right was the building uh, that has been demolished uh, down the street. If you look down the street, this is a, um, a very undersized roadway, but we have the housing authority on the south side of the street, uh, which has uh, been approved to demolish this entire structure and put really two large um, eightplex buildings. So there'll be four doors and four doors across the street directly adjacent to this project. As you can see here with the um, drawing in front of you with mostly brick masonry and then a hardy siding towards the center of it with these four doors facing onto Castle Street. So we wanted to take that into context with this particular project. Uh, when you look at this rendering at this location, uh, this particular address occurs right about here. Uh, so it's this unit that's directly across from both the Patterson complex as well as the housing authority. Uh, and down the street on this same block face, uh, we do have some examples of duplexes that have been approved in the past before our current CCO standards. Again, those were two-story buildings with kind of a first floor entryway. In this case, this uh, was on one lot of record, shared drive access, and then a second lot of record uh, down the street. Uh, as you can see, this one incorporates brick, some hardy, some multiple roof lines, and a bit of different articulations. Uh, and this is the proposed project. Uh, you can see, again, uh, some of those similar articulations. Main difference is this one does have the garages on the front side of the uh, property. I don't believe um, there's maybe one house down this whole street that has garage frontage, everything else, literally people are just parking in their grass front yards um, because it is a, an older you know, neighborhood. Uh, but as you can see in the drawing in this bottom right hand corner, the context of the adjacent property, how this uh, property uh, would be proposed to lay out and how it would fit within the context of this uh, very dense neighborhood uh, that already occurs Two corrections I would like to point out in the staff report when you look at the exceptions that I believe um, Mr. I'm looking for Matt Taylor. Oh, there he is. He's, he moved his seat. Um, he'll go over, but uh, when we talk about the garage facade, I think that number's been uh, moving a little bit, but what we've looked at in the past is the distance that this takes up of the entire front facade. The CCO has a limit of only 50% of that front edge of the building to be garages, so you wouldn't have a garage centric. Uh, so this they're looking at really all rounded up to 65% uh, 
uh, of the front building facade because of this recessed uh, access points. If these access points were moved forward, they could do 60%. So that one change. And the other thing is allow for the four parking spaces in front. I re-reviewed our um, zoning code today and just clarified in the CCO, if you have a single family detached, you can have parking in the front. But if it's anything greater than a single family, a duplex, triplex, quadplex, no parking can occur in the front. So you may or may not be aware of that. So about two years ago, we implemented some changes in our CCO um, that we're just now starting to see projects moving forward with it. Um, of course, we're doing a study session with you all in a couple of weeks when we'll talk about some other ones. Uh, but in this case, we believe that uh, it does fit within the context of the neighborhood, even though they are requesting these seven exceptions. Our biggest thing is, architecturally, does it fit with the neighborhood? Um, everything in the neighborhood is predominantly one story, but across the street we'll have very heavy density, bulk, two-story buildings uh, that we think play into that context of this particular structure. Uh, and then they're really looking at also a keeping kind of that shallower setback. They're looking at 22 feet. Normally we would require them to put it at 21 feet, which you couldn't park a car in, because again, it's based on the average setback of the block. Um, those things that they are looking at. So we do believe in looking at our future land use map. Uh, we believe that it does keep in character with the surrounding neighborhood as it does resemble a single family house. You know, most single family houses would have a two car garage. Here it's two units with two single car garages. So you get uh, that, but we do believe, and we've talked to the applicant, uh, we would just add, you know, our typical water table uh, at the lower levels that would be a brick and that will help it to better um, blend with adjacent neighborhood and bring kind of the scale of that building down. Uh, with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Matt Taylor who is going to be providing a presentation on the project. I'm just a better uh, looking version of Matt Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brian Grover. Uh, I am from SEC. Thank you for the opportunity tonight to present to you um, East Castle Manor. I'm going to make this full screen here. There we go. Um, as Holly said, this is located just um, northwest of the Patterson, Patterson Park Community Center uh, along East Castle Street. Um, there was a home on there recently, but it was taken down, um, having some issues with, uh, I believe actually some squatters in that as well. Um, the site was zoned residential duplex. Um, the site being 50 feet wide didn't really um, allow for the duplex product to fit quite well on the site, um, hence the reason for the PRD rezoning. The duplex product does have some synergetic components with it um, alongside the Parkside apartment complex development going in with the higher density on site <coughs> matching the attached products across the street. There's a fo site photo looking from the um, East Castle Road into the back of the site and vice versa from the back looking across to the Parkside complex. Um, this is a image showing the current streetscape for the project. Um, similar project products do exist near the site. Um, this one being the same one Holly mentioned, um, not too far down the road. The um, Parkside apartment redevelopment, here's an example of the elevations for what those would look like just across the street. The proposed plan, as stated, would just be two units on the 0.15 acres, just over 13 units an acre with the size of the site. It would be a duplex on an HPR. All utilities would be underground and managed by an HOA um, and provide landscaping as well as the private open space as required within the CCO. Um, here is some utilitarian aspects of the project. 
um, just showing the parking and the locations for the HVAC in the rear, along with the proposed locations of the trash cans inside the garage. There is a bump out. Um, these garages are smaller than what is typically um, required for the zoning ordinance, but in lieu of that reduction, there is a bump out being offered for that storage of trash cans and other utilities. The architecture of the duplex, um, it would be a two-story home maxed out at 35 feet, minimum of 1,500 square feet for the individual units. Uh, three bedrooms, once again, having those patios at the rear of the houses for the private open space. Um, they would be front entry garages, but have decorative doors with windows on them as well, and consist primarily of the brick stone and fiber cement board. Here's an uh, example of the floor plans with the daily living primarily on the first floor along with half a bath and the bedrooms upstairs with additional uh, full bath. Elevation of the front of the product as seen from East Castle Street. Um, here's the side elevations as well, still offering some um, unique aspects along with it, with the windows and that is for the same on the other side as well. Here's the rear of the unit uh, you can see here the example of what could possibly be part of the private open space in the back, separated by a six-foot wooden fence. The access to the site is just right off East Castle Street. Um, here, the open space in the rear, part of this development will also be including about four-foot, uh, some black aluminum fences along the back, along the edges of the product. This help find the space within the rear of the units while not completely enclosing them within. This is the list of requested exceptions. I won't go through this, but I do have a plan here labeled with where these exceptions do apply. Um, these exceptions are listed in the book, and if you guys have any questions about um, any of these exceptions, I'd be more than happy to discuss or go through those. Um, Overall, this product fits very well within the area. It follows the guidelines for the CCO and does have some um, synergetic um, alignment along with the existing duplexes along East Castle Street and the Parkside, uh, proposed Parkside development. If you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to discuss those now or after the public hearing. I just have one question. It was just back about two or three slides where we're looking at the back um, patios right there. So you've got that nice fence that'll be there in between the two units. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be like a, the aluminum fence you were sewing on the side property lines. Yeah, uh, following along the side of the, the home itself okay. just to help better define okay. that private space. And is that patio we're looking at <coughs> The patio that we're talking about? Uh, um, that's an example, yes. Um, but that's not what's being built. Uh, uh, exactly what's being built, I can let Ryan answer that. Because uh, I, I do think the other pictures look like it's just going to be the little stoop right outside the door. Which way, which way are you going to do it, Mr. Burns? Well, we're going to have a, a patio extend off the back of it, too, ma'am. Like this? Similar, it won't be similar. stamped concrete, but it'll be. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Those were just the pictures that came with the, the okay. plans. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's, I was really just wondering about those little, just the very small patio right outside no, the door. No, we're going to make, we, we, the reason we wanted to front load garages is to have the, the backyards and the nicer patios. Okay. And we, it'll probably be a, a, I don't know what a wooden fence, it'll probably be a vinyl fence, uh, divide them so it'll be a maintenance mm -hmm. issue. Okay. So Brian, while you're up there, I'm not a mathematician, but so we're cutting the garage down by a foot in width. Is that any issue with, you know, you got a passenger door and you got a driver's side door open at the same time? I mean, I don't mean to be. You're not going to park an escalator in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I mean, it's. Are we cutting it a foot width or depth? It's width. Yeah. Can, uh, can you go back? I'm sorry, I can't get my thing to load. Yeah, I, I believe it was. Yeah, I don't think it's quite a foot. Yeah, it, it, I think it's 11 feet 4 inches is the typical width, and we're asking to go down to 11 feet, which is, is a foot. Uh, okay. Four and, then okay. It's, and it's a foot shallower. Thank you. Right. Okay, so I, I was wrong. But that was my question, Can it, because does that include, show me where the 19 feet includes too, because you've got the bump out for the hot water heater. 
So this is the 11 by 19 area, and this is the additional bump after that stuff would go into. Okay. The so it is 19 feet. Yes. Exclusive of the bump out. Okay. I think an average car is like seven and a half foot, maybe a big car is, is so. I looked it up and the truck you drive is 21 feet long, Mr. Burns. 21 feet, well, mm -hmm. I don't know that many 2500s are gonna go in that garage. But, mm -hmm. It ain't fitting in there. Uh, you're gonna have to move some walls. And when you looked it up, how wide is that Ooh, truck? I did not did look you it look up. at that? Mm -hmm. I just, in general, I realize that's a big, that we're not talking about that truck, but just in general, the width of a car, y'all, all you guys, Mr. Harris, you know the answer to that. <laughs> How wide is his 1776 Tundra? No, we don't. Just an just average size width for the car. Yeah, so um, you're about, uh, depending on what car you could be, about seven, okay. seven feet. Okay. Okay. All right, any other questions before we open the public hearing? Thank you all. Thank you. All right. We will open the public hearing and ask if we have anybody that would like to come forward tonight to speak on this item. Anybody? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. What other comments, questions does the Planning Commission have on this item? There are none. I move for approval subject to all staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Jacob. Ms. Safa Water. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Silas. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Chair Jones. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Next. We have an annexation petition and plan of services for approximately 5.2 acres located west of Sanctuary Place. W. Andrew Adams is the applicant. Ms. Rush, good evening. Good evening, Chair Jones, Commissioners. Uh, the property owner, Mr. Adams, has submitted a petition requesting a portion of his property to be annexed into the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, the subject property is shown in the green highlight as approximately 5.24 acres. It's located west of Sanctuary Place, which is part of the, um, uh, the subdivision for uh, Marymount Springs. The purpose of the annexation request is for the area to be added to those three lots, uh, approximately 200 feet wide um, for each of those. And simultaneous with this annexation is a request to zone the property uh, PUD Mary Mont Springs, uh, consistent with what the, the dwellings are, are zoned at. Um, the annexation study is located in the city of Murfreesboro's urban growth boundary, and it is contiguous to the city limits along the east side of the property line, which is the, the three residential lots. Uh, the subdivision plat to combine the property with the three adjacent lots was recently approved by the Planning Commission. It also went through the Rutherford County and received its approval. At the time of um, publication of this agenda, I believe that we were contacted by the applicant's representative that they were still working on getting some signatures and closing on the property. And um, I don't know if there's, that's been updated, but we are asking that um, if it has not been completed, that that subdivision plat map be recorded prior to this going to the city council for a public hearing. So staff is recommending approval of the annexation for the following reasons. The study area is contiguous with the existing city limits and it is within the city's urban growth boundary. Uh, it is located within the service infill area of the adopted 2035 comprehensive plan for the future land use map chapter. And that city services can easily be provided as was demonstrated in the plan of services that was included with the attachment in this agenda packet. Um, staff is asking that the commission conduct a public hearing, discuss the matter, and formulate a recommendation to the city council, which would include a condition of approval that that map be recorded prior to the city council public hearing. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, Mr. Blomley may have more information, and I see the applicant's representative in the audience as well. 
Yeah, I, I would just to add to what Ms. Brush um, presented to you. Um, been very recently talking to Mr. Murphy, who is representing um, the three property owners. What, when, when they brought this, the idea of this annexation to us originally, um, to us it made sense if these, if this property were a part of three lots that were already in the city to annex the back portion of three lots that we're already providing services to, as opposed to annexing a very remote portion of a much larger piece of property. This, this is a large piece of property that fronts on Veterans Parkway. And so, so what we advised them was that before uh, this property was annexed is that it would be our recommendation that they incorporated the property into these three lots via a subdivision plat and that the property uh, be transferred prior to its annexation because we're already providing services to the three lots that it's going to be incorporated into so very very recently um, Ms. Rush and I apologize I didn't I didn't update you on this is that the plat was recorded however the transfer of the property has not taken place yet so uh, what we would ask is that um, any approval that of the annexation and the plan of services be made subject to the transfer of the property to the three lot owners take place prior to city council's uh, consideration of the item and that um, that the plan of services then be updated prior to city council to with the new ownership information um, and updating the maps to show it as part of those three lots as opposed to part of the more a, a more remote part of the larger Adams tract. Um, and as Ms. Rush mentioned, um, Mr. Murphy representing um, uh, Mr. Flat, who is one of the property owners who is uh, attempting to acquire the property from Mr. Adams. Uh, Mr. Murphy's here in the audience if you have any questions for him. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plumley. Ms. Rush, any questions before we open the public hearing? Thank y'all. We will open the public hearing and ask if we have anybody that would like to come forward to speak on this item. Okay. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. And do we have any uh, further comments or questions regarding this item before we take a motion? There are none. I move for approval. Subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion and second, Ms. Jacob. Ms. Sablewater. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Mr. Harris. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Silas. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Chair Jones. Aye. All right. Motion passes and we'll move on to the zoning application uh, for the same 5.2 <coughs> acres located west of Sanctuary Place to be zoned PUD. It's the Marymount Springs PUD simultaneous with annexation. W. Andrew Adams is the applicant. Ms. Rush. Thank you. This is the companion uh, zoning application to propose the um, property that is would to be annexed uh, to be zoned Marymount Springs Planned Unit District. Um, again, this is 5.24 acres. It's approximately 200 feet um, width and would be added to each of those three parcels that's contiguous to it. Um, as indicated, uh, staff is expecting that uh, the transfer of ownership to occur, and so this will happen shortly and before it should go to the city council for their public hearing. Um, the adjacent zoning, everything to the north, west, and south is in the county. It's predominantly all the same parcel that's owned by Mr. Adams. Um, it is zoned RM, which is residential medium density. And then the properties to the east are all within the Marymont subdivision, which is the PUD zoning. The future land use map for this area that's uh, proposed for zoning and annexation does designate this area to be suburban residential, which is consistent with the RS-15, RS-12, and RS-10 zoning districts. They're the larger lots that are single family detached residential. So this PRD or uh, PUD zoning is consistent with the characteristics of the uh, future land use map. Staff is uh, supportive of the zoning request um, because it is consistent with the future land use map and the rezoned property will then be part of that subdivision and comply with all the requirements of the PUD. The proposed map is uh, compatible with the adjacent land uses as well. 
So we're asking the Planning Commission to conduct a public hearing and discuss the matter, after which it would need to formulate a recommendation to the City Council. And again, the applicant's representative is here to answer any questions, as well as staff. Thank you very much. Okay. And we will open the public hearing on this zoning application and ask if we have anybody that would like to come forward to speak on this item. Okay, seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Any further comments or questions? There are none, I'll make a motion we approve, subject to all staff comments. Second. Sec motion and seconds. Ms. Jaco? Ms. Abelwater? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Mr. Harris? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Silas? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Chair Jones? Aye. Okay, motion passes. That concludes our public hearings for tonight. And next we have staff reports and other business. Mr. Blomley, bet Aye. you got some for us. I do, just a couple of reminders. <laughs> uh, I promise I'll be quick. I promise I'll be quick. Just a couple of, rem of reminders. I appreciate y'all um, getting back to me on the, our special workshop meeting and appreciate y'all's willingness to, to add another meeting to the, to the docket this month. Uh, as a reminder, that'll be uh, Tuesday morning, November 14th at 9 a.m. up in room 218. Um, the other reminder is about our continuing education. Uh, Ms. Jaco registered you all for um, the planning commission virtual planning commission training um, if you watch that that should take care of all of your state mandated training for the year um, and as i mentioned you can participate live or if you're not available you can you can watch it um, at your leisure so uh, if you have not gotten that uh, that registration email if for some reason that did not come to you or um, uh, just let Myself or Ms. Jaco know, and we'll make sure to to re-register you um, for that uh, for that training. Um, be happy to answer any questions about that um, before or after the public hearing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's all I have for y'all tonight. Okay. Thanks, Matthew. Sure. Any other staff reports or other business? Okay. If not, we stand adjourned.